Dedication to Fantasius Miller, written by Ben Hecht. This dark and wayward book is affectionately dedicated to my enemies, to the curious ones who take fanatic pride in disliking me, to the baffling ones who remain enthusiastically ignorant of my existence. To the moral ones, upon whom beauty exercises a lascivious and corrupting influence. To the moral ones who have relentlessly chased God out of their bedrooms. To the moral ones who cringe before nature, who flatten themselves upon prayer rugs, who shut their eyes, stuff their ears, bind, gag, and trust themselves, and offer their mutilations to the idiot god they have invented. <sighs> the devil take them. I grow bored with laughing at them. To the anointed ones who identify their paranoiac symptoms as virtues, who build altars upon complexes. To the anointed ones who have slain themselves and who stagger proudly into graves, God deliver himself from their cares. To the religious ones who wage bloody and tireless wars upon all who do not share their fear of life. What is God but a despiring refutation of man? To the solemn and successful ones who gesture with courteous disdain from the depth of their ornamental coffins. Why, we are all cadavers, but let us refrain from congratulating each other too courteously on the fact. To the prim ones who find their secret obscenities mirrored in every careless phrase, who read self-accusation in the word sex. To the prim ones who wince adroitly in the hope of being mistaken for imbeciles. To the prim ones who fornicate apologetically ugh, the devil can-cans in their souls. To the cowardly ones who borrow their courage from ideals which they forthwith defend with their useless lives. To the cowardly ones who adorn themselves with castrations. Let this not be misunderstood. To the reformers, the psychopathic ones who publicly and shamelessly belabor their own unfortunate impulses. To the reformers, once again, the psychotic ones trying forever to drown their own obscene desires in ear-splitting prayers for their fellow man's welfare. To the reformers, the Freudian dervishes who masturbate with purity leagues, who achieve involved orgasms denouncing the depravities of others. To the reformers, patience, patience. The psychopathic ones who seek to vindicate their own sexual impotencies by padlocking the national vagina, who find relief for their constipation in forbidding their neighbors the water closet. God forgives them, but not I. To the ostracizing ones who hurl excommunications upon all that is not part of their stupidity. To the ostracizing ones who fraternize only with the worms inside their coffins. Their anger is the caress incomparable. To the pious ones who, lacking the strength to please themselves, boast interminably to God of their weakness in denying themselves. To the idealistic ones who, unable to confound their neighbors with their own superiority, join causes in the hope of confounding each other with the superiority of their betters. Involved, but I am not done with them. To the idealistic ones whose cowardice converts the suffering of others into a mirror wherein stares wretchedly back at them a possible image of themselves. To the idealistic ones who, frightened by this possible image of themselves, join movements for the triumph of love and justice and overthrow of tyranny in the frantic hope of breaking the mirror. To the social ones who regard belching as a sin against the Holy Ghost, who enamel themselves with banalities, who repudiate 
contemptuously the existence of their bowels. Ah, these theologians of etiquette, these unctuous circumlocutors, a pock upon them. To the pure ones who masquerade excitedly as eunuchs and as wives of them, they have their excuses, of course, and who knows but the masquerade is somewhat unnecessary. To the pedantic ones who barricade themselves heroically behind their own belchings. To the smug ones who walk with their noses ecstatically buried in their own rectums. I have nothing against them, I swear. To the righteous ones who masturbate blissfully under the blankets of their own perfections. To the righteous ones who finger each other in the choir loft. God forgive me if I ever succumb to one of them. <laughs> to the critical ones who whoremonger on Parnassus. To the critical ones who befoul themselves in the temples and point embitteredly at the gods as the sources of their own odors. I will someday devote an entire dedication to critics. To the proud ones who urinate against the wind. They have never wetted me, and I have nothing against them. To the cheerful ones who tirade viciously against all who do not wear their protective smirk. To the cheerful ones who spend their evenings bewailing my existence. Ah, oh, the devil pity them, not I. To the noble ones who advertise their secrets, who crucify themselves on billboards in the quest for the Nietzschean solitude. To the noble ones who pride themselves in their stolen finery. To the flagellating ones who go to the opera in hair shirts, who excite themselves with denials and who fornicate only on fast days. To the just ones who find compensation for their nose rings and sackcloth by hamstringing all who refuse to put them on, all who have committed the alluring sins from which their own cowardice fled. To the conservative ones who gnaw elatedly upon old bones and wither with malnutrition. To the conservative ones who snarl, yelp, whimper, and grunt, who are parasites of death who choke themselves with their beards. To the timorous ones who vomit invective upon all that confuses them, who vituperate against all their non-existent intelligence cannot grasp. Uh, to the martyr ones who disembowel themselves on the battlefield, who crucify themselves upon their stupidities. To the serious ones who mistake the sleep of their senses and the snores of their intellect for enviable perfections. To the serious ones who suffocate gently on the boredom they create. God alone has time to laugh at them. To the virgin ones who tenaciously advertise their predicament. To the virgin ones who mourn themselves, who kneel before keyholes. To the holy ones who recommend themselves tirelessly and triumphantly to God. I have never envied God his friends, nor he mine, perhaps. To the never clean ones who bathe publicly in the hysterias of the mob. To the never clean ones who pander for stupidity. To the intellectual ones who play solitaire with platitudes, who drag their classrooms around with them. To these and to many other abominations whom I apologize to for omitting, this inhospitable book, celebrating the dark mirth of Fantasius Malher, is dedicated in the hope that their righteous eyes may never kindle with secret lusts, nor their pious lips water erotically from its reading. In short, in the hope that they may never encounter the ornamental phrases I have written and the ritualistic lines Wallace Smith has drawn in the pages that follow.